In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to spice up your blues solos with great chord turnarounds, right after this. Hello, my name is David. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping you develop your musical personality. Why? Well, to tell a better musical story. Today we're talking about the blues and we're gonna approach the blues in a different manner than you might be used to, to doing. With the blues, of course, we can use the minor pentatonic scale, the minor blues scale. We're in the key of G today, which means that, um, well, it means that a G minor pentatonic minor blues is going to work throughout the whole thing. It's gonna sound great. A lot of players do that, but you might be missing out. You might be missing out because if you were to follow the chords, then your improvisation is gonna be more connected with what's going on in the back. So just to give you an idea, this would be an improvisation based on a G minor blues throughout the chords. Works great. A lot of players have successfully built a musical career just with that. And that's fine, but there's a difference between that and following the chords. I'm kind of, kind of following the notes of that chord. I'm on G7, so I'm using notes of that. Now on the D7, C7. See how it's a little more targeted? A little more sophisticated. In an ideal world, you kind of want to blend both together, right? You want to develop some ideas using the, the heritage that we have, the musical heritage that we have with that minor blues scale. All those licks, all that vocabulary that is kind of expected, you want to use that. But every once in a while, you might want to land on uh, a note of the chord that you're playing over. And that note might not be in the minor pentatonic scale, and that's what makes it sound coherent, more sophisticated. The idea in this lesson is to focus on the turnaround. A blues has a turnaround, and that turnaround, that series of chords, will bring the listener somewhere else and bring him back in, and that emphasizes the fact that, well, we're starting that chord progression again. In a typical, very simple form of blues, we have the following chords. We're gonna start with, uh, with G, we're in the key of G, so we have a G7, G7, followed by C7, okay, that's the four. Back to the one, the G7, repeat that seven, the one, back to the four, C7, nothing new, right? Back to the G7. Okay, now we're gonna go to the five, which is the D7, C7. And this is the turnaround. So we got G, three, four, and D7. Two, three, four, and we're starting over. The last two bars are what we're gonna to consider to be the turnaround. So in this case, in the, the pure, simple form, we have a G7. Which is the one and the five. Now there are a lot of other turnarounds that you can use to kind of spice up that chord progression. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. Let's take a, a, a simple one borrowed from the jazz world. So instead of having for the last two bars, uh, the one, the first degree and the fifth degree, which would be G7, two, three, four, and D7, two, three, four, we're gonna replace that with the following chord progression, which would be a B minor seven on two beats, and then an E seven on two beats, A minor seven on two beats, and D seven on two beats. So instead of having, we're gonna have some E. It has the same function. Those chords bring the listener a little bit outside and brings them back in on the one to make the listener realize that, okay, we're starting over. All right, what does that have to do with your solos? Well, this is where it's pretty magical. If you, the soloist, imagines those turnarounds and plays as if you were 
following the chords of that turnaround, even if the chord progression is kind of a traditional blues, you're gonna sound great. You're gonna sound a little, little outside, but not in the bad way, outside with a focus, with a plan of coming back in. So how do you follow these chords? Well, you need to know the chords first and then just kind of target some notes of the chords. You don't have to play all the notes of the chord. If you did, it would sound something like, uh, like this. <laughs> hear the chord progression, but it's very sterile, very robotic. No, you can just play a few notes of that chord. So uh, this is the chord progression. Just hear this. Now my left hand is going to follow these, but play just a few of these notes. Okay, you still heard that in the back, right? I just suggested that. We're going to practice Improvis improvisation without the backing track first, imagining the chords. And um, I will guide you through it. So let, let's, give that a, let's give that a try. Here we go, starting on the one, G7. Two, three, four. C7. Just tying in a few notes of that C and the G7. If I get tired of that, minor pentatonic. C7. G7. D7. C7. And I'm going to replace this with a turnaround. Right? At the end you heard... You might need to take it a little bit slower at first to get used to those changes. It's kind of like a chess game where you are anticipating the next chord, whether it's a chord that is heard by the backing track or a chord that you're telling yourself with that turnaround, and then it'll get a lot easier to kind of replace some chords from the backing track, target certain notes that are not necessarily played by the backing track, but are suggested, and magic happens when you can do that. Now we're gonna bring in the backing track and we're gonna give that a try. Now before we do that, I should mention that you can grab the turnaround that we covered today and another one, plus the backing track that we're gonna use for free. There's a link below. Sign up once, you'll get access to not only the assets of this video for free, but all the other videos on the channel pretty much are covered at this point. So do it now. If you already signed up in the past, that link will take you straight to the lesson. All right, let's give that a try. Setting the G7. A few notes are enough. Here's the C7. Back to G7. So it's really important to know when those chords are, are happening. Here's the C7. If you get lost, you can always play minor pentatonic, minor blues. Back to the G7. Here's the D7. Again, just a few sparkles are, are great. So that's pure minor pentatonic minor blues. I'm gonna target the, the, the notes of the chords a little bit. And I'm gonna take a few liberties now, imagining some other turnarounds that are not necessarily there. Let's see what happens. Now, this is a lot more that you can do with this, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. Why? <laughs> because I, I believe that guitar is 
much more rewarding when you explore the possibilities, when you take a, a small, simple concept, such as learning new chord turnarounds and, and trying them and seeing how they work for you. Do you like this sound? If it's a yes, continue exploring that path. If it's a no, don't worry about it. You don't have to know it all. Just go with the, the sounds, the ideas that really resonate with who you are, because after all, this is your musical story, and that's what the channel is all about. I hope you take this lesson to heart and download the backing track and the, the charts for the chord progressions. They're gonna be very useful in your, your research. This is an exploration game. And again, the link is below if this is your first visit. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Consider subscribing because, well, because I have at least two videos at this point coming out every single week, helping guitar players just like you. Finding your voice on the instrument to tell your own personal musical story. And if you wanna stick around, that's great. D don't watch that one. Watch that one, the one below. Fine, watch the one above. All right, I'll see you there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Practice well.